Hello and good evening, good evening. Welcome to Sunday's Best. And I trust that you have had um, a great Father's Day. Um, if your father is living, and um, if not, great thoughts uh, with family or friends about your father. And so we are, again, thankful uh, to be here again this Sunday. And let me ask you up front, did you do right by you this uh, past week? Did you pay yourself? If so, and you have been consistent, your account is looking pretty good right now. So um, we're going to refresh. And if this is your first time for Sunday's Best, Welcome, welcome, welcome. And try to get somebody else on. You know, um, we just want to share and we want to be able to collaborate uh, and benefit uh, from some of the information that you'll hear this um, Sunday afternoon. And again, it's Sunday's best. Uh, and the best thing you can do is make the best of a good situation. Uh, make the best of this season of your life and prepare for the coming season and the coming season as we've been talking about all month long is the recession and with the stock market this past week I believe it's here and so uh, we're going to do a quick a five minute review and then we're going to start with our session for tonight so last week I began by saying how many of you are beginning to feel a pinch how many of you are filling up pulling up to that gas tank and saying ouch that hurts how many of you were caught unprepared for an additional three four hundred dollars a month for gas that is um, a budget buster but you know what if you're gonna drive your vehicle you have to put in gas and so that is one of the things that um, wherever we are in this season of uh, economic uh, turmoil just know that you didn't order it but you're gonna have your dose of it um, it's not the prescription that's going to fix everything in fact it's going to tear up a few things but we're all in it together we didn't order it but because we all live here in the US we will suffer from it and what it it's caused me to think and to share with other people uh, since our um, session last week is why do we um, the US why do we depend on so many other countries for our necessary things like baby food like fertilizer like oil and gas when we know that we are big consumers of all of that so I asked the question last week and so I'll add to it this week who remembers Hugo and if someone told you that we were going to have another Hugo how would you prepare differently who remembers the flood of 2015 when the water moved the earth like we had never seen before when the water moved homes highways like we had never seen before who remembers the recession of 2008 to 2014 um, you know it happened during that time so um, we talked about how do you prepare yourself for a recession? And I gave you eight tips. I believe it was eight. I said, if I said to you or someone said to you, a train is coming and you were on a track, would you stop to have conversation and say, is it going north or south, east or west? It was enough to know that it's coming. Would you say, how fast is it coming? How long is it going to take? Well, 
this recession is one of those things that you just need to act, um, prepare to be safe because it is coming. And so on those uh, seven uh, tips I gave, it said number one, reassess your monthly budget. Number two, contribute more towards your emergency fund and cut out unnecessary spending. Number three, pay on, focus on paying off high interest rate debts, but that's only if you already have your emergency fund. Um, number four, keep up your usual contributions. If you're putting money into a 401k or um, something of the sort, try to keep up with that. Um, evaluate your investments. And again, I made the disclaimer that I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a CPA. So um, seek counsel, seek wise counsel. Number six, build up skills on your resume. Work on you. Raise your skills. Um, and then you'll become more valuable to your employer. But don't depend on job security. Number seven, brainstorm on innovative ways to bring in extra cash. So um, those were the seven. And then I said, avoid the mistakes, avoid these mistakes during a recession. Number one, avoid making financial decisions out of fear, like jumping in or out of the stock market. Um, what you should do instead is stay calm until you can assess your financial situation and get a handle on or get advice on what you do need to do. Number two, mistake to avoid. Avoid taking on a lot more debt. Right now, you want to pay off some, but you want to prepare and you want to position yourself first. Number three, avoid taking responsibility as a co-signer. You don't want to do that. Um, I don't know why they call it co, but once you sign on the dotted line, you are equally responsible. And if that person doesn't pay, you are totally responsible. So think about that. Number four, avoid neglecting your emergency fund state savings. Stay on track and keep that money separate from your bill money. Uh, number five, avoid increasing your fixed expenses, meaning it's not time, uh, it's not the time to go out and buy a brand new car or a brand new motorcycle or any uh, what Robert Kiyosaki calls doodad. Those things that will not put money in your pocket. They're actually taking money out and if they're not helping you to make money, uh, you're just doing an upgrade because you want to upgrade, it's okay if you got your financial house in order. If you have your four walls covered, then you can make a decision. Because, you know, money, when they need more, they just print it. And for us, all money is, is something that gives us options. Uh, when you don't have any money, you have less choices. When you have a little bit of money, you have more choices. When you have a lot of money, you have a lot of choices. And the last one was avoid having, um, avoid not having a backup plan. 
So that's what this month of June is all about. It's positioning you, preparing you to have a backup plan. Because the train is on the track. The train is on the track. There's fire. When somebody else fire, don't stand there and be consumed. So that's um, a recap from last week. So are you better prepared? Are you thinking about being prepared over the last month or so? What does it all mean? What is inflation? What is a recession? What is um, when we are in the middle of it? What is in the middle of it? What does that mean for you? What does it look like for you and your family? All I know is what I'm thinking is it's time to tighten up your seatbelt. It's time to tighten up the seatbelt. Um, I keep hearing that we're in for turbulent times. But you know what I say. It does not benefit you or me for me to have some knowledge of something um, from good sources and not tell you. But neither would I have a survival plan kit and not share it with you. Now what you do with it is up to you. Because the choices you make will make you. And if you do nothing, it's still going to happen. If you do something, at least you can kind of predict your outcome. So what does tighten up mean? Um, minimize your spending. Hold off on large purchases if you can. Now may not be the best time for you to buy that dream home, but it could be the best time for you because one size doesn't fit all. If you're in a position to sell your current property and move up and capitalize and benefit on the sale of the home and buy another home, it could be your time. Um, but for some, some other people, it may not be. Uh, it's hard for the first time home buyer right now, but not impossible. But you know what? When it's hard, you do a hard thing. When it's hard and you know it's going to be hard and you know it's coming, you prepare. You save even more. You pay down even more debt so that when... Um, things lighten up or begin to brighten up, then you're in a good position to possess the land. It's all about preparing, positioning, and possessing. So what is it a good time to do? You're at home. What about a home-based business? When we talk about positioning yourself, um, I went back to um, the virtuous woman. She was a mother. That's a job. She was a wife. That's a job. She was a seamstress. She had six or seven streams of income. She was a seamstress for herself. And she bought the finest fabrics. She was a designer of gowns. You ever think about they wore beautiful gowns back in the Bible days? Well, she was a designer of gowns. And she sold them at a shop. She was a real estate agent. A woman after my heart. She made crafts for homes. She knitted sweaters for a shop. So she had a home-based business. And according to the tax preparers, that's what we should also do if we want to benefit from the tax laws. So 
Um, here are a few things. Start a home, boat, uh, home based business. Why? Because it can be a strong stream of income. It can create the best tax write-offs. <clears throat> Number two, live below, below your means is another way to deal with runaway inflation and a, in a recession. You got to spend less than you make. And so what does that mean? You got to know what's coming in and you got to know what's going out. You know, you got to know your numbers. You got to know the vital signs, when to buy, when to stop. Um, you got to know, number three, what you're spending so that you can know what you can uh, cut back on. And um, I believe I asked this question before. Some of us say we could cut back on hair, nails, uh, shopping for clothes, a um, lot of different things. Um, we, it, it, it's what's, you know, what's important to you and how much of a priority it is for you. Because number four, you not only have to have an emergency fund, because if you don't, everything becomes an emergency. But when you need three to six to 12 months worth of expenses set aside, I'm going to share with you a couple of ways to work on those things. So think about it. What problem, what financial problems could you solve if you had two or three more streams of income? Did you know that the virtuous woman um, was not just known for being a blessing to her husband, um, but that she was a woman of many skills and she didn't sit at home being a homemaker and not using her God-given talents and skills and gifts. That's why we all have gifts, so that we can use them. And um, if she could design gowns back in the day and sell them, knit sweaters and sell them, buy real estate and some of the other things, what couldn't we do? What couldn't we do? Uh, men and women, if you're on the line, there is no telling what we could do if we actually applied. Uh, right now, they say we don't use 30 to 40 percent of our brain or of our potential. Imagine what would happen if we went full throttle, if we went all out, if we played like uh, like it was a Super Bowl every day of our life. What couldn't we accomplish? So prepare and position yourself because a train is on the track. A train is on the track. If you knew that Hugo was coming, as devastating as it was, if you knew that the flood of 2015 was coming again, how would you prepare? So tonight, I want you to ask yourself the question, how can I keep more of what I make? How many of you know you probably already made a million dollars in your lifetime? But how much of it did you keep? How much of it did you prepare for a time such as this? How much? How are you prepared? And how much have you got tucked away to carry you through? So um, another question is, what do people do when they don't have enough money? 
What can people do when they don't have enough money? Financial setbacks have happened and will continue to happen <coughs> to us as long as we're here on this earth um, because history does tend to repeat itself. So right now, here's my advice to you. Spend less money. Use cash. Because if you're using a credit card or even a debit card, sometimes we pile it on. But if we're continuing to take out a 20 or a $100 bill or a $50 bill, somehow or another just feeling the money leaving and transferring from your hand to someone else's may be more impactful than just putting a card in. Um, here's a point that I thought was well worth making. If the purse, and we're talking about spending, spending less, if the purse that you're going to buy is $200, and you, on a regular base, can't save $200 a month. Leave the purse where it is. Gucci is not going to miss the money. Um, Louis Vuitton is not going to miss the money. They have never filed bankruptcy. They're not in the poorhouse. Look for something maybe on sale or clearance, that is $20. And if you're talking about a wallet um, or a purse, unless it's something for a special occasion, why do you need a two or $300 purse? If you can afford it and you deserve it, by all means have it. I'm talking about people who are struggling and still want to fake it till they make it. Um, there are people wearing seven, eight hundred dollar red bottom shoes. That's fine if you can afford it. That's fine. But just make sure that Gucci, Louis, and Chanel are not um, your main focus. You know, when you got it like that, that is so good. And if that's where you want to spend your money, that's fine. And you know, they say poor people stay poor acting rich. And rich people stay rich acting poor. Figure that one out. Uh, we read a book called The Millionaire Next Door. And it truly exemplifies that. Rich people stay rich by acting poor. They don't buy everything they can afford. Um, example, cars. Poor people want to flaunt or enjoy the best there is in an automobile. It makes them feel good. And I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying there's a train on the track. If you don't have your four walls covered, riding in a new car, renting the rims with no place to live that you can call your own does not make good sense to me. That's to me. All right? How do you prepare? Automate. You know, we say, it's Friday. It's the weekend. Living for the weekend. But you know what? A lot of people are not just living for the weekend. They're living for the paycheck. And that paycheck, if you can move it from the job to the bank, which is the holding tank, not the best holding tank, but in this case, it's the place for it to be until you can figure out and ask yourself the question, 
what did I work so hard for and what am I going to do with it? So I'm going to tell you a few things. If you automate, this will help you as far as preparing for um, doing better financially. Deposit. Deposit the entire net income. You know, you may make $2,000 a week, but by the time it gets to the bank, it may be $1,500. So that's your net income. So you want to deposit that um, into a checking account. And then um, budget it out. Don't go to the payday loan because you didn't figure it out, because you didn't automate it, and somehow your money just fell out of your pocket after you left the job. Um, and then you don't have enough to pay. So when you go to the payday loan, you're going to pay 300 to 500% interest on that $1,500 that you could have automated and had time to figure it out. So the second thing you do after that money hits that account is you make sure that an amount is going to your emergency fund in another account so that you want to keep this emergency fund money separate. Number three, think about your debts in advance before you just start writing checks or withdrawing. And so if you've got your emergency fund set up, the next um, thing you should do is start trying to pay off some debt in preparation for the recession. And if you use um, what Dave Ramsey calls the avalanche uh, method, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you will put aside uh, monies to pay the high interest rate first. And if you use the snowball payoff effect, you will pay off the smaller debts first. And then you want to add something to your savings because your emergency fund is not your savings account. It's different and they should be kept separate and used for different purposes. And then number six, if you've done all of that and you have 75% left, if you have to pay bills, you just have to pay bills. That's where you are. So um, these are just a few ways that you can position yourself for the future. A train is on the track. So prepare yourself. <clears throat> so tell me or share with, uh, with us some things that you have been thinking about this month. Some things that are example. We all need transportation. We all need a car, but we all don't need a BMW or a Bentley or a Jag. We all need um, food, but we all don't have to eat out three, four days of the week. We all need breakfast, but we don't have to go to Starbucks or Cracker Barrel every day. Um, when you say, where am I going to find enough money to put $2,000 away in um, an emergency fund? And then have 15% to put, the, put in the savings. How much money are you spending on a car? Because you want the finest. I just departed with my 22-year-old Mercedes. And I'm not looking to buy another one. And right now, I'm driving a 1999 Lexus. And it's running really well. Thank God, as they say, knock on wood. And when the time comes, 
I'm not buying another Mercedes. I don't need it. And so, for I guess the average car payment may be four or five years. So, for 15 years, if I was smart, smarter, I would have put aside what a Mercedes payment would have been. And I would have had a great account for a recession. And you could do the same thing. I listened to two millionaires today. And they're driving. One is driving a 2004. No, I'm sorry, 2014. And the other is driving a 2005 Mercedes. And so where do you get the money from? Well, you have to think differently. You have to separate a need. You need, need a car, but you don't need a BMW. You need a phone, but you don't need the newest iPhone. You need your nails to look good. You need your hair to look good. But what would happen if you went less frequently? What would happen if you did your own nails? Um, need, desire, and wants. You have to separate those. Sometimes you have to brown bag your way to green. Meaning pack that lunch. If you're at home versus spending 9 or $10 on a salad. If you're at work, get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Get a ham sandwich. Get a uh, makeup salad at home. These are ways, and you would be surprised how much money you save. And also, if you frequent um, fast food restaurants a lot, they got a way to get you. Um, and just look at the amount of change that you have in your purse or that you have in your car. And think, each time I got this change, I broke a bill. And it was more, probably more than a dollar bill, probably more than a five dollar bill. It was probably more like a ten dollar bill if you went for lunch. So think about it. Um, There's some things that we do impulsively. Impulsive buying, shopping on Amazon. Use the 24 hour rule. If there's something that you think you want, walk away from it. Have the walk away power. Walk away. And if you still want it as badly, 24 hours later, think about it. It might be something you need to buy. But with all that I've said, nothing changes unless you change. Thinking change does not make change happen. Change is when you decide that you want a different outcome. In order to have a different outcome, you got to do something different. If you have been wanting to do something or trying to do something or talking about doing something for 10 years, something as simple as not living on the edge, not living with your credit cards maxed out. Not robbing Peter to pay Paul. Not knowing what would happen if you got laid off. Not knowing how your family would fare out if a recession came. The average person knew another recession was coming. A lot of people got drifted off into la la land when um, this administration um, gave out so many different things for stimulus checks um, or stimulus packages. Those of us who owned a business, that was a, like a first time ever. You got to get money um, to keep your business afloat. But you know what? Your life and your lifestyle is not for the government to determine. That's on you. Never count on someone else to make your livelihood. 
Even if you're working, have a backup plan. Even if you're retired, have a backup plan. You can't spin out of control just because you're retired. Unless you planned for a recession. And if you said, I got my retirement car. I got my money. I got my social security coming in. Um, I'm going to live my life now. Live, but don't live on the edge. Don't live on the edge of just having enough. And the last thing I'll say about that is when you plan to retire and you thought you had your retirement car, <clears throat> what if it conks out? You still got to put more gas in it than what you had planned for. Um, and ladies, and, and, and I'll say gentlemen too, when you lose a spouse, that's disheartening enough. But guess what else happens to you financially? You lose half of the income coming in. Because if you and your spouse was on Social Security, one of you will no longer get it. The one living will only get one. And it's not like they'll say, well, he worked so many years or she worked so many years. They have so much money into the retirement system that now we'll just give that check, let that check come into the household to help take care of the budget. No. When you least can afford it, they cut you in half as far as that income. And God forbid the person dies without insurance. You don't even have that. All the government gives you is $255, I believe. And that can barely buy a casket spread. So, Big Brother is not looking out for you. Your uncle did not leave you with a silver spoon in his mouth. He just wants to collect his um, taxes every single month. That's what your Uncle Sam does. So, you got to look out for you. Look out for you. So, that's Sunday's Best. That's what I have for you today. And let's see who we have on. And I thank everybody for getting on. Let's see. Uh, Gloria Moore says good evening. And she's paid herself. Andrea Williams. Hello everyone. Hello Andrea. Um, Lily James says she's paid herself. Genevieve Burgess says happy Sunday to everybody. Uh, let's see. Lavinia. She's paid herself. Um, Olivia Green says good evening. Uh, let me go further down. Um, yes, paying myself, but not, not as much. Given the rise in gas prices, food prices, electricity, and other rising costs. Yes, Andrea, it's just um, one of those things. Um, we didn't ask for this, but we're in it. And we're in the middle of it. Um, so hitting on the, the, the gas prices, the food, the electric, it's been hot. Hot. Today, not so much. But it's been hot. And um, rising expenses. So where do you cut back? you got to use wisdom. Diane Jackson says hello, and she's paid herself. Um, Rima says good evening, everyone. Hey, Debbie Fulton. Um, thank you for listening. Gloria Moore says great tax benefits from running a home-based business. So how many of you on here have a home-based business? And if you don't mind, just list what your business is. Um, Mavra says hello, and she's still paying herself. Um, Genevieve says 
to survive today, other streams of income are needed. That is true, Genevieve. I approve that message. And rich people stay on a budget. Um, just because, you know what? They buy things that they want um, off their profits. And they keep their money working for them. Gloria Moore said it certainly does not make good sense to have things and not have an emergency fund. I totally agree. And let's see, we got Diane Jackson, Sandra Ellison um, says she paid herself. Um, Marie says great tips tonight. Uh, Lavinia says very good session. Hey, Laurie. I thought about you this week. I saw you were on vacation, and um, I'm sure you had a great time. And you said great information and motivation. And uh, let's see. Sandra Ellison paid herself. Um, I think I have covered everybody. If not, I will um, definitely go back through and uh, respond to each person, each person. So, with that being said, um, I want you to have a great week. I want you to um, think about, think before you spend. Take time and pause. Think before you spend. Is what I'm spending necessary? Is what I'm spending going to help me make more money is what I'm spending on this particular not spending but what I'm investing in is it going to have a good return for me is it a good is it a good time to buy this that or the other y'all we got to ask ourselves a lot of questions uh, we may not be on a on a jury stand, but we got to be accountable. And if there's a penalty to pay, we're going to pay it because we have to live with the choices that we make. So let's all learn to make better financial choices. They don't teach us this in school. Um, we we knew our multiplication tables. We had those little cards, and as parents, we sat our children down and said, what is two times two? Uh, what is eight times eight? And sometimes we had to give them a little cheat sheet. But you know what? In life, you don't get that cheat sheet. You don't come out of high school knowing the financial 101 that life is going to throw in your way. Um, so I say, when you know that you don't know as much as you need to know, you listen, you attend. And you know what? Everything that's free costs somebody something. It either costs them time to study, time to experience it, um, but if they want to share something with you, even if it's a minimal fee that you have to pay, evaluate it and see what am I getting out of this and how is it going to help me in the future. The train is on the track, y'all. Have a good night. Have a good life. In fact, have a million dollar life. Because if you're going to think you may as well think big. It doesn't cost you any more. It can benefit you a lot more though. Alright? So have a great week.